Man has always had a quest to go higher, faster and further. This quest brought about the birth of the Space Age. Before man could explore the stars, he needed a base from which to explore. The John F. Kennedy Space Center on Merritt Island and Cape Canaveral provided that base. It is NASA's main launch and shuttle landing complex, employing 13,500 people who daily push the limits of scientific knowledge. Approaching the visitor center, you were met by the spectacular sight of the rocket garden. Here, visitors can experience the very same redstone, atlas and titan rockets that first put NASA astronauts into space. You can climb aboard Mercury, Gemini and Apollo capsules, giving the young and the young at heart an idea of the cramped quarters the astronaut pioneers endured. You can even walk along the very gantry Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins walked on when they boarded Apollo 11 for the first moon landing. Still in the Florida sun, there are yet more rockets, this time a Saturn Apollo 1B lying next to the rocket garden. The Saturn 1B was the predecessor to the mighty Saturn 5s. The sight of rockets doesn't end there. The Apollo Saturn V Center is a huge museum built around its centerpiece exhibit, a restored Saturn V launch vehicle, and features other space-related exhibits, including an Apollo capsule. NASA launched 13 Saturn V rockets between 1967 and 1973 with no loss of payload. The design payload was the manned Apollo spacecraft used by NASA for moon landings and the Saturn V went on to launch the Skylab space station. Moving through the Saturn V center brings you to the main visitors complex where several exhibits of flight used and flight ready spacecraft are on display. The Gemini 9A which was flown on a 1966 manned space flight in NASA's Gemini program was the seventh manned Gemini flight and was crewed by Thomas Stafford and Eugene Cernan. This is the command module of Apollo 14, called Kitty Hawk. It was the eighth manned mission in the Apollo program and the third mission to land on the moon, touching down on February the 5th, 1971. The Mercury Atlas 8 was a Mercury program manned space mission launched on October the 3rd, 1962. The spacecraft was named Sigma-7 and completed six Earth orbits, piloted by astronaut Wally Shearer. Here we see the Apollo Skylab Rescue Command Module. It was on standby during the Skylab 3 and Skylab 4 missions in the event a rescue mission was necessary. This Lunar Lander was originally due to fly on Apollo 15, but the mission type was changed and it was replaced with a more advanced one that carried a lunar rover. The lunar roving vehicle, LRVs or lunar rover, was a type of surface exploration rover used on the moon's surface during the Apollo program. It is also known by its popular name of Moon Buggy. This is the spacesuit worn by Commander James Lovell on the ill-fated Apollo 13 when the moon landing was aborted following an explosion on the service module. And 
of course, no visit would be complete without being able to touch a piece of moon rock. A short walk and you are in the Space Shuttle Plaza. Visitors are met with the jaw-dropping full-sized NASA Space Shuttle replica Explorer. Here you can experience how astronauts live and work on board real spacecraft. The tour takes you to the flight deck, the mission area, living quarters, the payload bay and of course the bathroom where everyone wants to know how do you go in space. Sharing the plaza with Explorer are the other components needed to launch the orbiter. A huge external fuel tank and twin solid rocket boosters. Then it's time to board one of the Kennedy Space Center's own fleet of tour buses to explore and experience the full scale of the space base. First stop was to the impressive Vehicle Assembly Building or VAB, once the largest single story building in the world. The VAB was originally built to allow for the vertical assembly of the Saturn V rocket for the Apollo program and could handle four at a time. It is now used for housing external fuel tanks and flight hardware and is the location of the Space Shuttle Orbiter mating with the solid rocket boosters and external fuel tank. The interior volume of the building is so vast NASA employees have reported it to have its own weather, with reports that rain clouds form below the ceiling on very humid days, and it has even been known to rain inside. Outside the VAB sits one of the most important pieces of equipment in the Space Center, the Crawler Transporter. Without these $14 million movers, NASA would be unable to move the readied launch vehicles to the pads. With a top speed of only one mile an hour, they're not the quickest, and using 150 gallons of fuel a mile, not the most economical. It has been used to transport the Saturn V rocket, the Saturn 1B rocket during Skylab and Apollo Soyuz project, and now the Space Shuttle, a 60-foot tall observation gantry gives us the chance to see the crawlerway. The crawlerway runs between the vehicle assembly building and the two launch pads at Launch Complex 39 and has a length of 3.5 miles. Some of the more poignant moments on the tour are when we visit the older areas of the space station that have real history Many have memorials to great deeds or greater sacrifices. Launch Complex 34, used by NASA as part of the Apollo program to launch Saturn 1B and Saturn 1 rockets, now lies mainly in ruins. Notably, it was the site of the Apollo 1 fire, which claimed the lives of astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White and Roger Chaffee on January the 27th, 1967. Today, all manned launches are made from Launch Complex 39 with its two pads 39A and B. The site and its collection of facilities were originally built for the Apollo program 
and later modified to support space shuttle operations. The tour ends at the Kennedy Launch Control Center, a massive command bunker housing five control rooms, handling all aspects of the launch before handing over to Mission Control at Houston. One of the control rooms has been preserved as it was for the launch of Apollo 7. A computerized recreation of the launch is run, giving visitors a feeling of what it was like to be in the control room at the time of a launch. GNC. We're go. Tell me. Go. Control. Go flight. Procedures. Go. Inco. Go. FAO. We are go. Network. Go. Recovery. Go. Capcom. We're go flight. We are go for launch. 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Launch commit, liftoff. We have liftoff with Apollo 14. Three minutes past the hour. The tower is clear. Houston is controlling. Thank you. 